A while back, I made a video counting down the names you may recognize in the Roger Rabbit credits, and now I've decided to take this opportunity to look at the notable talented folks who have worked on another animated landmark, The Simpsons. Most people who have seen the series know of the contributions of Matt Groening, James L. Brooks, Sam Simon, Danny Elfman, Alf Clausen, Conan O'Brien, and the actors who lend their voices to the citizens of Springfield. However, hidden within the credits are folks who have contributed a lot to animation over the years, and we're going to celebrate them. Here are the names you may recognize in the Simpsons credits. Tim Johnson. Unlike the other people on the list, Johnson only worked on one episode, but it's a fairly groundbreaking one that he was very responsible in shaping. Johnson directed the computer animated portion of the Homer Cube segment in Trias of Horror 6. Johnson and his crew at Pacific Data Images had the difficult task of turning Homer and Bart into three-dimensional characters, and considering this was made in 1995, that's really impressive. Jeffrey Kanzenberg was a particular fan of this episode, and thus hired PDI to become part of the then-new DreamWorks Animation Unit, and Johnson co-directed their first feature film, Ants. Since then, Johnson has directed more films for DreamWorks, such as Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas, Over the Hedge, The Kung Fu Panda Holiday Special, and their most recent release, Home. Jeff Pidgeon. On The Simpsons, he worked in character layout during the earlier seasons and on the Do the Bartman music video, which is a job that requires choosing the poses for the characters in a particular scene. Before that, Pigeon had since at Rock Bakshi Studios and Warner Brothers Animation. However, his biggest contributions to animation have been working in the story department at Pixar, where he's been credited as a story artist on the likes of Monsters, Inc., WALL-E, Up, and some of the Toy Story series. Like many of Pixar artists, his voice has also appeared in the films themselves, most notably as the cute, squeaky toy aliens. Adam Van Wyck. A storyboard artist on The Simpsons during the 8th and 9th seasons, if you watched an animated action show over the past decade, there's a good chance you saw his name in the credits. Before that, he worked as an animator on video games and CD-ROMs for Disney Interactive, and then ultimately became an accomplished storyboard artist on many action shows at Disney, Marvel, and DC. Kim Possible, Teen Titans, Justice League, Ben 10, The Spectacular Spider-Man, yes, he worked on all of those and has been recognized multiple times by the Annie Awards, including winning one for his storyboarding on Batman Beyond. And yes, he even contributed to one of my favorite action-packed animated features, Epic. Jim Reardon. One of the top directors on The Simpsons, Jim Reardon has directed more than 30 episodes, including 22 short films about Springfield, Homer Goes to College, The City of New York vs. Homer Simpson, and the episode I still think is the best in the entire show, Homer's Enemy. He also directed and wrote a number of episodes for Mighty Mouse The New Adventures, with his work being highly praised by Ralph Bakshi, and then later served as a writer for Tytoon Adventures and ultimately co-wrote the screenplay for my favorite Pixar feature, WALL-E, earning him an Oscar nomination. He also had a hand on the script for Wreck-It Ralph. Jim Reardon is definitely one of the smartest and most biting writers working in animation. Gabor Chupo. Whether the name rings any bells or not, you definitely know his style, as he was the co-founder of Klasky Chupo which created Rugrats, The Wild Thornberries, as told by Ginger, and Our Real Monsters, which all bear his art style, which evolved as he was growing his artistic skills in Hungary before moving to the United States. Gabor Chupo and his company were hired to do the animation for the Simpson shorts on The Tracy Ullman Show, and then served as the animation supervisor for the show's first seasons, before the producers decided to switch production to film Roman. Nonetheless, his mark is still felt throughout the series. It was one of Chupov's animators who suggested that everybody have yellow skin, and the character of Dr. Nick was partly inspired by Chupo. Recently, Gabor Chupo has jumped to directing, including the film adaptation of Bridge to Tarabithia, but his early contributions to The Simpsons will always be remembered. Lauren McMullen, one of the top animation directors in the television world, McMullen has served as both a storyboard artist and director on The Simpsons, but her most acclaimed work actually came from a stint on Avatar The Last Airbender. On that series, she both directed and storyboarded a good chunk of the episodes in the first and second seasons, winning an Annie Award for her storyboarding and even getting a writing credit for one of the segments in the Tales of Ba Sing Se episode. 
She then moved to Disney, where she storyboarded on Wreck-It Ralph, and got to direct Mickey's first theatrical short in 18 years, Get a Horse, which cleverly combined hand-drawn with CG animation. Whether she decides to stay at Disney or move elsewhere, her name is definitely one to look out for. Dan Povemeyer and Jeff Swampy Marsh. There's a reason I put these two together. They both met on The Simpsons while working in the layout department, and there was something that just clicked. They both moved on to work on Rocco's Modern Life, on which they served as writers, storyboard artists, and directors, and won an environmental media award for one of the episodes. Even though they went their separate ways, with Marsh moving to the UK and Dan Povemeyer becoming a director on Family Guy, they both were trying to sell a simple idea about two stepbrothers who decide to make the most of their summer. This was Phineas and Ferb. And when Disney finally picked it up, it became one of the smartest and funniest series on television right now. And even though it's been running since 2008, it has not lost any of its spark. In some way, we have the wonderful originality, creativity, and overall success of Phineas and Ferb to thank for the likes of Gravity Falls and Wanda Over Yonder. So thank you to The Simpsons for making sure Povemeyer and Swampy cross paths. David Silverman he has worked with The Simpsons through about its entire run, going all the way back to the Tracy Ullman shorts. He directed the first episode, Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire, and has been heavily involved in the series, serving as not only a director, but also a producer, starboard artist, executive consultant, and occasional animator. He is such an important part of the series, he was chosen to direct the long development Simpsons movie, which I consider easily the best Simpsons-related anything in the 21st century. He also directed the theatrical short The Longest Daycare, which earned him an Oscar nomination. He's also done work at other animation studios, too. He provided designs for The Critic, co-directed Monsters, Inc. at Pixar, directed some of the sequences in The Road to El Dorado, and did story work on Blue Skies, Ice Age, and Robots. He's even an accomplished tuba player, showcasing just how many talents Mr. Silverman has. Rich Moore He's definitely had an interesting career, transitioning from adult animated series and now working on family animated features. He was involved in the story and animation in Bill Croyer's Oscar-nominated short, Technological Threat, and then became one of The Simpsons' most lauded directors, responsible for such episodes as Marge vs. the Monorail, Cape Fear, Lisa's Substitute, and Itchy and Scratchy the Movie. He eventually directed episodes of The Critic, Futurama, Drawn Together, and supervised almost half the run of the short-lived Sit Down, Shut Up. John Laster then hired him to direct Wreck-It Ralph, and was largely credited for turning it into the sweet and funny movie it eventually became, and was the person who decided to use Sarah Silverman as the main inspiration for the character of Vanellope. He's currently co-directing Disney Animation's next film, Zootopia, set for release next March, and his participation has definitely upped my anticipation for it. And the name you'll definitely recognize in the Simpsons credits is Brad Bird. If you're an animation fan, you certainly know who he is, and he's had quite an exciting career. A student of legendary animator Milt Carl, Bird was hired and immediately fired by Disney, and when he went out on his own, he tried to get an animated film based on the spirit off the ground. And if you're familiar with his work, you can see his fingerprints all over this test trailer he made. While the perception of animation at the time kept the project from being made, it caught the attention of Steven Spielberg. In 1987, Bird co-wrote the screenplay for Batteries Not Included, and directed the Amazing Stories episode Family Dog for Amblin, both of which showcased his strong story sense. The latter's visual style got him the attention of Matt Groening, and Bird ultimately played a role in turning The Simpsons into an animated series worthy of primetime. As the show's executive consultant, he would look over the storyboards and give them a more visual and cinematic flourish in the angles and shots. He also directed the Do the Bartman music video and the episode Krusty Gets Busted, which started Sideshow Bob's story arc on the series. After consulting on The Critic and King of the Hill, Brad Bird got to direct his first feature film, The Iron Giant, which started his impressive streak of high-quality animated films that take full advantage of the cinematic medium. He moved to Pixar and directed The Incredibles and Ratatouille, and made the successful jump to live action with Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. He has a new film coming out in a couple of weeks called Tomorrowland, which is definitely one of my most anticipated of the summer. Needless to say, there's a reason Brad Bird was a prominent name in The Simpsons credits. 
However you feel about The Simpsons, as you can see, plenty of talented artists have been involved over the years, and however minor, contributed something to its long-running success. See you next time.